Angela Washko. I'm an artist, uh, performer, and a community organizer. Uh, 15 minutes is not a lot of time for me to talk about what I'm going to talk about, so I'll try to be as concise as possible. I'm going to talk mostly about the project I've been working on for um, about the last three years, and a tiny bit about my most recent project, and then barely anything about another project. So, in early 2012, I founded the Council on Gender Sensitivity and Behavioral Awareness in World of Warcraft. And before I give you any context for that, I'm gonna play a video. Let me full screen it. I'll just play like a minute of this. Oh. I'll see the text. Oh, the, the bubble. That owl is a person too. Yeah, so how do you even respond to that? Oh, sorry, yeah, so just very briefly, um, to go over the screen really quick, um, I was sna with my back to um, the audience, and there were three players engaged in a conversation about abortion. Um, Chastity, a... Um, who came out to me as a 19-year-old pregnant woman living in Kansas, uh, married and very happy. Um, she said a very extreme statement claiming that um, anybody who has had an abortion should be sterilized for life. Um, and then the conversation goes on to um, Centrist, who is on the far left. She's a self-identified 22-year-old um, college student and self-identified femi feminist who talks about you know, many of the nuances around that statement. Um, and then there's an owl flying around, and he came out as a 40-year-old uh, professor of math, and he talks about um, numbers and, and stuff like that later. But um, so, <laughs> so that was the first discussion I ever facilitated as the Council on Gender Sensitivity and Behavioral Awareness in World of Warcraft, the first time that I decided for six years, I've been playing World of Warcraft, and now instead of like continuing to play the game, do the quests, get better items, um, continue to raid continuously as I had for many years, I decided instead that I wanted to facilitate conversations about sort of the community's language usage around women, which if you know much about um, online games, it, they can be quite misogynistic, um, homophobic, and racist spaces. And World of Warcraft, in my experience, and all the servers that I've played on is um, no exception. Um, but from sort of the get-go, the project was nuanced from the start, and this was an intense eight-hour-long conversation that I had with this player named Chastity. I don't have a lot of time to explain the project, but I did uh, yesterday my creative time report on the project went up on creativetimereports.org. It's a very, very long sort of expose on the process. So if you are interested in this project, um, that would be a good place to look to get kind of the long, over, overly long explanation of it. So before I get into the details of what I did as the council, I always try to start off with, what is World of Warcraft? This question is usually really important as I've learned that art audiences 
Very few artists and curators seem to have ever played the game, and the specificity of the game space is essential to why I chose to create the work, and it's always hard to translate it to non-players, especially in 15, 15 minutes. How many of you have ever played World of Warcraft? I think I see a couple of hands. But how many of you know what it is? Sort of. OK, great. It's like, I mean, it's, it just, it's turning 10 years old in a couple of days. So it's been around long enough, and it's the um, most, most popularly played game of all time with over 7 million players. I usually, when I do this talk about my practice, I usually have to d explain what WoW is. Um, massively multiplayer online role-playing game. In the game, you choose a character or avatar to play, and you're placed immediately into this epic landscape, and then you're given quests, which involve killing goblins and getting items, and ultimately leads to really awesome equipment, and as you progress, your world expands, and it's huge. It may be larger than the United States, I don't know. And it sends you to different zones throughout the world, and eventually you have to work with other people playing the game to get the best equipment and advance the furthest within the game. As many as 40 people people at once. Um, it's quite complicated. So this is me and a friend flying through the epic landscape. So as the Council on Gender Sensitivity and Behavioral Awareness in World of Warcraft, instead of continuing to follow what the game wanted me to do, the better equipment, killing the challenging enemies, I decided to go into major towns and eventually what evolved out of trying to talk about the language formation turned into discussing feminism, which is not part of the quest culture of the game. So I wanted to share a few discoveries. Um, so like I said, I've been playing WoW since 2006, always frustrated with the way the community talks to each other. Um, and even though the developers of the game actually did a pretty good job of making the quests and appearances and characters pretty gender sensitive, the community has made up for um, that. So <laughs> I decided to talk to players uh, about why the shared language had to be that way. Um, and so, I started capturing video of these conversations and started an archive of the discussions, some eight hours long, some 40 minutes long, some for live audiences, most of them just in the comfort of my bedroom or studio or even residencies. People will pay you to do this. It's bizarre. Uh, but <laughs> so this is early on a player told me, well, all you really need to know about feminism is pregnant kitchen, get dishes, naked, masturbate, shaven, and solid firm titties. So before this project, I had already been for a long time um, making archives um, and videos from single player role playing games that I'd played throughout my child childhood and started like sort of looking at how um, the representation of women in the storytelling of these um, games uh, were presented. So from games from about 1992 to about, let's say, 2009, um, and this is just a really quick slide to make it very evident some of the the comparisons I found throughout games. Um, one of the topics is women uh, dying while men watch, in a very romantic way. And the other one is uh, don't leave me and I'll, pr I'll protect you, and anyway. Um, so even though I'd been playing uh, WoW well since it came out, it took years of um, playing games and also making collaborative work in public space for me to realize that this multiplayer game environment was as much a public space as ones that I physically inhabited. So if anything, this space encourages um, more social exchange in WoW than physical urban space does. Um, people are less inhibited to talk to random strangers. Um, and this is just several collectives and artists coming together to make New York City's waterways visible as a source of transit. These are the sort of things I was doing in public space. <laughs> Anyway, um, however absurd it looks here, I'm just trying to say that this was sort of a departure point for starting to think about WoW as, as public space. Um, so anyway, I initially went into the project with a plan to try to change the sexist and racist homophobic language used casually inside WoW by rallying people who were also at the end, uh, who were sort of sick of, of taking uh, this discrimination in the space. However, as I talked to tons and tons of players about it, the reasoning for its existence became more and more complex. And I realized that trying to change it is not only unrealistic and unsafe for some players, uh, but also kind of colonial in its impulse. So my intentions shifted away in the beginning from trying to change it and rather to trying to understand and discussing the issues with the player base itself and giving them a platform to talk about the issues. Um, so. Um, especially now as we're in the midst of the Gamergate movement, 
There are lots of generalizations made about WoW players by players who don't play games. WoW is often trivialized, I'm sure you know this, it's players made fun of and the phenomenon looked at as though it's played exclusively by 14, or as somebody said to me earlier today, 15 year old boys. According to census data done by the Daedalus Report, which you can look up, the player base is actually um, quite diverse. Uh, the average age of the player base is 29. Diverse in terms of occupations, age, economic status, um, sexual orientation, education, and so on. So it makes its all-encompassing misogynistic language even more interesting to me. Um, but it's not terribly diverse in gender. Um, WoW is played at this point by, in general, on most of the servers, about 85% men. Also, 55% of the female characters running around are actually played by men and less than 1% of women decide to cross over and play male characters. So now at this point, it is assumed that every character running around inside WoW is male, and women actually have to come out <laughs> as women to be recognized as such um, by maybe making too many smiley faces or potentially using flirty language. And by doing this, risk, ridicule, and sexual harassment, um, here's a, a female player explaining to me why she doesn't play male characters. LOL logic. Um, anyway, this situation creates a strange climate of men projecting their desires onto female avatars who can't talk back, the ones that they play, and simultaneously a culture of female scarcity within the game, which rewards women that perform femininity the best within their networks, guilds, and shared urban spaces in the game. Women play women, and men play women. Ooh, that was a bad sound. Um, so I'm very interested in this phenomenon of male players sort of, for lack of better explanation, cross-dressing. Um, I don't project myself or a female onto my orc or my troll, and the women I talk to in general don't either. So I think there's a lot of interesting social dynamics to blame for this phenomenon, especially because it wasn't always like this when it started. Um, I also think that you could link it to ideas of possession and Laura Mulvey's um, sort of gay, the gaze in film theory, but not enough time to go here, but I asked one player who prefers to play the female Pandaren race, which is this lovely stacked panda, and um, they project a human woman onto their panda. Girl pandas just turn me on. I mean, this is the line between trolling and, you know, whatever, but um, because I'd rather look at a girl's butt than a guy's butt. The first time I heard this, I thought it was very strange. But then I heard it over and over and over again. It's by far the most popular I get, uh, answer I get to this question. Um, and it, I, it just, it's just true. And there's actually an article on Slate that you can look up about that, which is an offset of the Daedalus report. Um, and then here is a player yelling to the entire radius of the town that it's because they're not gay. So anyway, um, in the beginning of the project, I got a lot more uh, responses like this. Feminism equals wanting to do everything a man does but can't even stand up to pee. Um, but as I've gotten better as a facilitator over the three years I've been doing this, I get less conversations like this and um, actually surprisingly much more thorough, seemingly sincere discussions. Um, here's feminist equals not feeling like you have to have your granny mustache waxed off. Um, so it's very interesting also from that I, I started realizing that I could collect what people from completely different places geographically sharing this digital but extremely spatial public space, what they link to feminism. So here players uh, link feminism to communism, um, also some statements about inadequacy of women. Um, in the same sort of discussion, it jumped to uh, talking about sex and hiring and job discrimination. Here a player says, I wouldn't hire women for the type of work we did. Um, brought on a lot of debate. I didn't expect a heating, venting, and air conditioning hiring manager to engage me in a discussion about feminism in the first place. And, and also it was interesting that to him this, that his own hiring procedures were a part of that discussion, which I think is, is true. Um, <laughs> but it, it actually, then became a discussion about women's health and whether women should get time off because apparently all women need time off for periods and whether this was grounds to not hire a woman and some women got very angry. Um, and anyway, so this was just one conversation. Um, 
This woman talked to me about hiding in the game, hoping that players will assume that she's a man. And she's definitely not alone in this practice. I've gotten this response a lot. Um, she says, I usually hope that people assume I'm a guy because women get shit talked and wow. Uh, and then she later mentions to me that her boyfriend plays all female blood elves. I was going to show some of this, but I realized that I'm like practically out of time. So I'm not gonna show that uh, clip. <laughs> But the range of topics covered in my conversations has varied from abortion, as you saw, to racism, uh, occupational discrimination, love, economic inequality, politics, same-sex marriage, rape, parenting ethics, reproductive rights, among much else. Um, I started the project. Um, a lot of my influence for the project in the first place was that I kept getting told to get back in the kitchen every time I said that I was a woman. And this was very like frustrating to me. So this is somebody telling me that women need to make his sandwiches faster. Wow, you have a computer in your kitchen. Um, somebody then said to me, wow, your cord must be really long or you know, any of that. Feminism can be defined, a woman going into the kitchen. Get back to kitchen. So. <laughs> This is one of the most repeated responses that um, women get when, they, when it's acknowledged that they're women and also um, to my questions about feminism. This popularly used phrase is usually used by male players when a female player reveals herself. But one of, and one of the biggest arguments about my project when I first started doing it and when I didn't really know what I was doing um, was that there needs to be a space for fantasy and wow is that space for fantasy. But as I've learned, of course the phrase get back to the kitchen or make me a sandwich, maybe, maybe that can be said in jest. I'm, I'm still not sure about that. And players will defend its use, saying it's part of the game and a joke, but it's occurred to me through many of the conversations I've facilitated that WOW is a space in which the suppressed ideologies of a politically correct American society flourishes. It's falling out of fashion to be openly a bigot, bigoted sexist, even so much so that one can be fired from their jobs for being one. So there are marginalized spaces carved out where this language can live on and be the predominant one. WOW is like this. The common language in WOW, therefore, is definitely not a result of pure imagination, um, as one might hope, especially as you see turtles and um, orcs and blood elves carrying on and, and flying around. Um, the common language in WOW is definitely not a result of pure imagination, but of a resistance to impo impose cultural rules in physical social space. The politics of physical space are amplified here. The anonymity and autonomy of this virtual space allows for this language to thrive because nobody's held accountable for their traditional and often problematic views that are falling out of fashion. But at the same time, this anonymity allows people to be a lot more honest, a lot more revealing in a way, as they have nothing to lose and many are looking for someone to talk to who will listen. And my sort of research project platform becomes an abstract place for their um, views to travel to. Um, and that may have some meaning, though they're not sure what that might be. So very briefly, what am I doing now? Um, I recently worked on a project with Alex Young called SurfNet, which involved paying uh, 200 people in Amazon Mechanical Turk, another crowdsourced labor platform, um, to fill out surveys about the value of the work they produced within that crowdsourced platform and what the environments in which they complete the work look like. So what rooms are they in when they do it? How they're feeling as they complete human intelligence tasks, which tasks they choose and why, um, among lots of other things. And then it was both a, a web-based project and also had a storefront in a, um, a neighborhood in Helsinki, Finland that's in the process of being gentrified. Um, we created videos documenting all of the responses, um, which were also playing in the storefront. Um, this is somebody describing their room, where they're working. Um, a lot of emphasis on privacy and having, uh, being able to set your own schedule and stuff like this. Um, we're working currently on a book for, um, compiled from the room workstation and mood descriptions we found. Um, there's still a lot we wanna do with all the data that we got from this project. Um, I've, I'm gonna not talk any more about it, but you can check it out online at surfnet.us, which I'll show in a second. And the last thing I wanna mention, because I might be able to get help from all of you, um, for the past year I've been reading a series of books by author and men's seduction coach, Roosh V. 
He's been called the most infamous misogynist on the internet, which is pretty impressive because there's a lot out there. And he spends his time traveling around the world teaching men how to fuck women in different countries and contexts as quickly as possible. He's also very prolific. Um, if you don't know him from his writing career, writing um, what many cultural critics have called rape guides across geographic and cultural barriers, you may know him as the head of Return of Kings, a part of the manosphere, a hotbed of writing around men's rights activism, and also now a certified hate group according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. I'm working on a web-based platform and a series of interviews in which I give uh, the supposedly thousands of women that Rushfi has slept with uh, using extremely aggressive strategies outlined in his book, an opportunity to on anonymously report their experiences. Thanks, Rhizome, for a grant for this project. <laughs> Sarush found out about it and post oh, thank you. Uh, posted it on Twitter when it was a finalist and not a champion. Uh, and I tweeted back at him um, saying that, you know, the project really wouldn't be complete without an interview from him. Um, he, you know, was, is very important and didn't have time to respond to that, so I reached out to him over email. Um, to my surprise, he actually did respond to my email, um, letting me know that... Um, I don't have, if, unless I have hot girlfriends in Ukraine and Poland, and by doing this interview, he might have sex with them. Uh, since that's maybe where he is, he has to politely decline. Um, he also lets me know that his time is very valuable and you know, so on, what's, what's in it for him. However, after a month of emailing back and forth, he finally did offer <laughs> to allow me to do an interview with him, stating that he trusted me. He made, he made me um, send him one email question a day, um, and then after a month and a half of this, then he said, okay, we can do the Skype interview. <laughs> it was a really interesting process. Anyway, um, he was interested in doing the project because he thought perhaps being shown in a gallery or museum context, it would help him uh, with cultural capital and therefore make him more bangable, uh, which <laughs> was my argument and he, he agreed with, so I felt good about that. So anyway, I did a two hour long interview with him. I'm still processing it, it's quite an experience. Um, I'm interested in a lot of my projects in both putting myself at risk and also in sincere empathy as a tactical device to operate between communities that don't typically communicate. Um, so anyway, if you have been with this man or know anybody that has, I'd love to talk with you. Um, I can promise you anonymity, respect, and an opportunity to rate your experience, um, even if it was awesome, like that I'm totally interested in the nuances. So that's my, sort of my thing. So anyway, he's made a pu public approximation of you anyway uh, that you don't know about, um, and you weren't given a voice in that, so I would love to um, give that back to you <laughs> and happy to supply the platform. So uh, anyway, there's some web stuff, and thanks so much.